ancient voice whispering from the void, and it chills my lightless heart. G'day guys, Duckville here. It is the 4th of February. It's my stepmom's birthday. Make sure you say happy birthday to her. But today we are going to have a look at a Zerg vs Protoss on Zelnaga Caverns. This has been the theme of the day today is Zelnaga Caverns, so we may see some more games on this or something like that, I'm not sure. But our uh, Zerg player down here is from the NSP team, I believe. Uh, NSP Fatigue, I think his name comes out of, something like that. Um, he's got to be our red zerg down here in the bottom left corner of Zelnag Cabins in the Bat Cabins And our Protoss up here as we can see is Nex Lin. Now don't be confused This is not the uh, Lin from the Moon team of course uh, not the Moon team the Fox team That's the one I'll get it right someday and uh, Yeah, so this is a different Lin. I'm not really sure if it was just a copycat name like uh, originally Marine King Prime's original name was uh, Boxer and being a copycat name of Boxer, but uh, either way uh, He is going to be our blue Protoss up the top there in the top corner and we will see some interesting builds here uh, I know normally I don't actually watch uh, One of my things is to not actually watch replays before I actually cast them But uh, lately there have been some absolutely appalling ones that I sit there and I cast them and then uh, You know I get through the games and it's just an absolute pile of crap So uh, I have been checking some of these ones lately just to make sure they are They do have something interesting in them or they have uh, some uh, cool players in them So we do see a annoying probe coming down here to the natural of our Zerg player fatigue and uh, pops a pylon down here just to make sure that the uh, hatchery doesn't go up too quickly. As we can see our Zerg player is actually up to 15 supply so normally you'd want to have one up by now and as a response to that he's going to grab his uh, spawning pool and the uh, extractor quite quickly there. So he's going to head out grab some speedlings make sure he can get some map control obviously to take out this pylon as well then he's going to put that hatchery down I would assume. And we do have a generic sort of wall here for our Protoss player. The Cyber Core is now done. There is no Zealot coming out at the start, which is a little bit different to see. Um, this probe coming down to try and defend the pylon that he built, but uh, I think he will actually kill this drone, and he does indeed. That is actually a little bit of a victory there for Lin actually killing off that drone. It's not often that you get this, a kill like that right at the start. Obviously, Fatigue wasn't really paying attention. He was probably having some more uh, lunch or dinner or breakfast or whatever he was up to. But... We do have Lin uh, just getting his second gas up there, obviously going to go for something uh, generally standard. Obviously, when, when you actually see a Protoss not getting the second gas when it, once the core is already up, that will generally mean that they're going to do some uh, some very heavy zealot pressure with uh, warp gates, of course. So it's uh, it can be coming. You can see something like a four warp gate that actually does the same sort of damage, but it's still very heavy. Uh, it's still light, sorry, on sentries and stalkers, which obviously makes it a little bit less effective. So, as we can see here, our Protoss player is actually grabbing, grabbing a second gateway. He's going to get that one up shortly. We have a probe scouting around as well. This is that hero probe that got the uh, pylon down and the kill right at the start. So, this guy is quite happy with himself wandering around. He's got uh, Eye of the Tiger in his, uh, in his MP3 player while he's scouting around. And he's just going to head down here to the bottom corner. And we do have a couple of Zerglings heading out. Uh, they're going to try and put some pressure on the front of the Protoss base. You would expect them to probably have a shot at uh, the wall if they can, but they're not obviously going to be able to there. We do see a sentry is out in time, and it'll be able to help out with the defense. Now, Lin's got um, the sentry, of course, is there. We've got the, um, the second sentry on the way. So with the second sentry, we'll probably see some sort of expansion quite quickly there from our Protoss player now. A third warp gate is up and running as well as we can see here another probe this hero probe is getting it's certainly worth his money here he's gonna die to this Queen though but he's seen the roach warren there of course and he's seen that there is no second gas yet so this sort of signifies if I remember my Zerg correctly that uh, the Zerg player here fatigue is not going to do anything too harsh at the start but he's uh, he's definitely gonna be able to defend himself if he needs to but Couple of Zerglings going down here. He's going to lose this Overlord as well. The Overlord goes down, and the Sentries are uh, doing their job there. With a couple more, as we said, we have five Sentries coming out here. I've lost my connection to Battle.net, as if I actually care. Um, but uh, we'll close that one down. The five Sentries have come out now. This is what you generally see with this sort of fast expansion. You'll see some Sentries to make sure you can actually force field your ramp if the Zerglings try and run by. 
or to of course force field off uh, roaches or any sort of uh, early pressure that you may see from a Zerg player. Now, we do see that uh, the lair is on the way, the second gas is on the way, we probably will see a third gas shortly as well, but we'll see how that pans out for our uh, Zerg player. He's got a couple of roaches out to make sure he can defend as well. You want to keep make sure you're um, on top of your army production just to make sure that if any shenanigans come out from the Protoss player, you can actually defend against it. And it looks as if this probe is uh, also going to head around the uh, the hallway down here. The, uh, it's not the tasteless secret hallway, it's actually the John the Translator common knowledge hallway, but infinitely more useful than the tasteless secret hallway, I believe, as uh, we have seen in many GSL games. Now. Lin's actually got a Stargate out. This is uh, very common now to see uh, a Stargate come out pretty quickly there and of course to see a Phoenix come out of it usually pretty quickly. No, we've actually got a Void Ray, so we're going to see some Void Ray action from our Protoss player. He's going to lose his probe unfortunately, but he's uh, going to have the Void Ray there obviously to help out. Oh, he actually saves that probe. That was a VIP probe uh, coming down and being saved by the, uh, by the Protoss forces there. Now Lin actually doing a transfer of his probes, getting them across. For those of you who are in the, uh, who've just started playing, or if you're in some of the lower leagues and you're not sure why you would send the probes over here, it's just to make sure that you're, uh, that you've got an adequate, like a, an even spread of your probes. So you've got some here, doing a nice job here, but when you've got too many here, that you actually need to move them across to another base, as we saw there. So. Just a little bit of a tip for you guys, the Void Ray is out and he's going to be heading around the map. It does spot one Zergling, going to kill that one quite easily. The problem for Lin now is that uh, the Void Ray is now a known uh, attacking unit for our Protoss. So uh, Fatigue's going to be able to build up some units and actually defend against it. What he's going to do here is uh, put down some spine crawlers. He's got some roaches, obviously. He knows this attack is coming. This uh, Overlord may go down. Yeah, it's probably going to go down and actually this will help charge up this Void Ray. Not really sure why Lin is actually retreating with the rest of his forces, but the Queens come across and uh, try and help out, but they don't save the Overlord in time. One of the Spine Crawlers gets cancelled. This, this is a really good sign of a high-level player, is that uh, you're actually really doing good calculations of how much defense you actually need to defend these sorts of units. But as we can see there, uh, that may have been part of the plan for next Lin, uh, just actually removing his gateway forces and making it look like he didn't actually have too much else apart from the Void Ray, and it may have actually worked. But we do have Roaches and Hydras moving out here for Hydras, obviously, to provide the uh, air anti-air support for these Roaches, not to mention the high DPS that they that Roaches do. And they're going to move up here along this uh, this left side of the map there. We do have a one roach hanging around here, providing a bit of trouble there. I'm not really sure what the point of that is, but either way, it's pulled the Protoss forces back, and he's going to need to defend against an attack, perhaps here. No, nope, he's uh, going to retreat as well. Let's have a quick look at what the uh, what the guys are doing in their bases. We do have the uh, Hydralisk groove spines done. They've got their groovy shoes on, and they're going to be able to do some awesome dance moves against the Protoss when it comes to battle. And we had this natural going up nicely as well. Not too much happening here in the Zerg base just for the moment. So we do have a probe here who has uh, actually put down this pylon across at this uh, in the John the Translator hallway. <laughs> and um, I'm just going to call it the hallway. I don't, I don't really care whose hallway it is, by the way. Uh, um, we do have a bit of tech coming out from our Protoss player. He's got plus one weapons just about done. The robotics facility is uh, pumping out an Immortal and then a Colossus. So we'll see some interesting robotics play there shortly. And I think we do have an interesting attack coming down here from Lin. He's going to send in a couple of Phoenix. This is a nice little balanced play when you uh, when you actually bring some Phoenix down with your Void Ray and do some harassing here. As we can see, if he wanted to, I'm not sure really why he didn't. He was probably just a little bit scared of the Hydras. But uh, you can actually lift up the Queen, charge up the Void Ray on that Queen without the Void Ray taking any damage from the Queen. And then you're golden. You've got a Void Ray with... Uh, I think it gets the full charge and you can actually just run around and cause all sorts of trouble in the Zerg base once that Void Ray is up and running at full steam. Now, speaking of full steam, we've got a third base going down from, from Fatigue. He's going to have that gold up and running shortly. This is going to give him a really nice boost if he can get that one up and running, which I think he will because he's got a really nice force to actually defend against any Protoss aggression here at the moment. And as we can see, the Roach is sort of moving out probably just going to have a little shot here just to see if he can cause any damage and perhaps of course give a little bit of, bit of cover for that uh, that third base to get up and running of course you, you don't want the uh, protesters to be hanging around the map with map control while you're getting your gold base up but we do have a really diverse mix of units here from 
uh, next lane. He's got a Colossus, he's got an Immortal, he's got some Stalkers Extensories, and a couple of Zealots too. So the uh, extended Thermal Lancers on the way as well. So both of these guys playing generally, it's it's quite passive in, in the respect to that none of them have actually taken shots. There's a little bit of uh, sort of map argy bargy going on where they're trying to make sure that they have map control as we can see here but it's not it, there's there haven't been any sort of uh, you know lord of the rings style battles just yet which we may indeed see soon plus one armor is on the way for lin he's got he's still producing some more void rays he may be going for something void ray ish indeed he is yeah he's got uh, the second stargate up there is uh, up and running and we do have a twilight council as well so Lin's got a very nice force here. He's got a couple of Void Rays, a couple of uh, Colossi. He's got one Immortal and a few Stalkers and some Phoenix to provide some air cover as well. And he may try and engage here. This Protoss force looks like it may be enough to take out these uh, these Roaches and Hydras. I'm not really sure just at the moment. Depends how good his force fields are. Probe Gum's down to put a pylon down as well just to bring in some more units. We see a Guardian Shield, the Colossi are taking shots. The Hydra sitting at the back, killing off those Phoenix. Phoenix are not really doing a good job, some nice force fields there, cutting off, making a nice little choke point there. This is going to let uh, Lin actually sit back and kill these Corruptors before they cause too much damage, but I think the damage is done. They've killed off one of the, two of the Colossi, and it looks as if uh, we have seen, there we are, we got some warpins from that pylon completing just in time, providing a little bit of an extra boost to the Protoss army there, and we do see... Uh, I'm not sh really sure which way that goes, that battle, because that sort of went both ways. You see a couple of Colossi going down, but also a lot of the Zerg forces as well. Re-engaging here, some more force fields going down, separating all these uh, Zerg units at the back. The Hydras and the Roaches are getting, uh, having to run around, doing a little bit of run around job there, coming around the sides to make sure they can get into the fight, but the Void Rays are providing a lot of the damage here. They're not actually charged up just yet, but they will be in a second, and if they do, they'll just rip through all these roaches, of course. The roaches chasing after these colossi. It looks as if Fatigue's actually set these guys onto the colossi, and they have actually uh, killed off one of them, but one still remains, and it looks as if this Zerg base is quite exposed for the moment. We'll see if Fatigue can uh, help defend it, or if he's going to lose this one. I'm not really sure which way this, gonna, this is going to go. The Corruptor's coming in from the side, very nice tactic to use the uh, use the advantage of the ground there, but it looks as if there was just not enough there. But the uh, hatchery does go down and Protoss retreats, so nice little attack there, nice little bit of pressure to make sure that uh, the Zerg player is uh, not just, you know, sitting idly there and macroing up, which you really do not want as a Protoss player. But looks as if Lin is uh, going to set up some defensive measures here. A bit of an old school, older school brood war style where you put some cannons at the back and then put some gateways up the front. Um, a lot of you guys would think, well, but my gateways will die straight away. But no, you, you actually, if your cannons can stay up longer, that's obviously better. So we uh, see a great little progression there with the defense from Lin. Looks as if Fatigue is going to try and get some more macro going, taking this fourth base over here. This is a little bit of a risky base, perhaps. I'm not really sure... Um, if this one was the best one to take, depends how he spreads his creep. If he does a nice job spreading the uh, creep tumors around, he might be able to keep that one nice and safe. But looks as if the uh, roach spots these cannons, somehow gets away. That roach actually is uh, surviving on 33 health. And he's got, uh, he's just running away, trying to run home and actually tell, him, tell the boss that uh, the third base is up and running. More void rays still coming out here from our Protoss player Lin. He's currently got four Void Rays and he's going to need a few more if he's going to take this uh, take this Zerg to town. But it looks as if some Zealots have warp warped in here at this uh, pylon down the bottom and these Zealots are going to be able to come in here and take out this fifth base. I'm not sure if he actually knew that was there initially or if he spotted it somehow. I haven't seen any observers out on the map, which is interesting. The uh, Zerg hatchery gets cancelled and indeed the uh, zealots have done their job there but they're probably going to get caught up by these roaches five roaches six roaches seven roaches coming down i'll count that one right next time uh the seven roaches coming in to take out these zealots doing a little bit of micro just to make sure that all the roaches don't die but we do see two three of the roaches actually going down which is a little bit unfortunate i don't think that was actually needed but protoss uh lin has finally moved into his own gold so he's going to be able to get his own economy up and running quite nicely here as we can see plus two weapons for ground is on the way blink along with a couple more void rays as well and an observer finally coming out he's probably going to use that to clean up some of the creep tumors but 
This uh, third base is quite well defended for the moment with the cannons at the front and the only problem I have is if, uh, is if he's not really prepared for any perhaps roaches or hydras up here on the ridge but either way I'm sure he would actually spot that if that was the case and as we can see let's just have a look at what he can see of the zerg base not really too much here obviously he knows what is going on because of the tech structures he's seen but uh, are the, the units he's seen, but looks as if a DT is coming out. A second DT is just whopping in at that pylon down in the hallway, and some DT action is going on here. We're going to see it take out some of these uh, drones. It takes out one, but then actually gets hit up by that uh, extra, the overlord, that, the overseer, sorry, that was there as well. This extra DT taking these guys to town, got four kills, probably going to get a couple more perhaps before he dies. No, just uh, sticks to that four. So a little bit of harass there. I'm, I'm a bit surprised that uh, Fatigue hasn't sort of looked around the map to find out where these units are coming from. Obviously those zealots that came in here uh, perhaps could have run around, but those DTs, I mean, you've got to check some time to make sure that uh, there aren't any extra units. As we can see, he has no idea. He hasn't even gone anywhere near here. But he does have some more DTs coming in at the back. So he's going to need to be well prepared here. I'm not sure which way Lin's going to go with these. He'll probably just go straight into this expansion again. Three DTs, but the Overseer is here and is going to see every single DT that is there. Hasn't actually moved it yet, but the DTs are actually going to move in quite quickly here into the main they're going to kill the rest of these drones that are left over at this uh at the main lair and they're actually going straight for the lair i'm not surprised i'm a bit surprised he didn't go for the queen or the uh hydra den or something like that just before uh he gets cut off but it looks as if some roaches are coming in the overseer is going to come from the side and give the detection on those dts and the dts go down there it is but we do have a battle up here at the middle and we do have a whole heap of void rays here the void rays have finally gotten to a really nice mass but it looks as if fatigue has a really huge bunch of corruptors himself so the corruptors are going to provide a lot of damage against the void rays along with the colossi as well but it looks as if some great force fields have helped uh, Lin actually pick off a lot of the ground units and now actually helping him get the stalkers out to kill off the corruptors and there we go we actually get a gg that is a really powerful force here from our protoss player and as we can see the uh units just absolutely ripping through every single thing that was there the corruptors going down the brooches and the hydras going down it was just not enough for, for fatigue to fend off this powerful style of attack here with these units with their their plus two to ground and their plus one armor along with the void rays providing a lot of damage as well so great little game there from these two players we do see i'm not really sure why lynn's sticking in this game he's just cleaning things up making sure the job's done you know he's one of those dudes who doesn't quit till everything is actually destroyed he's probably if he plays terran he'd probably float his buildings up into the corners before he loses as well i'm not really sure but great little game i hope you guys like that one that was uh very very cool we saw a an interesting build from our protoss player he actually pulled out some void ray shenanigans you don't always see void rays in some of these uh higher level games on the korean ladder that's actually probably one of the first ones i've actually seen uh so it was quite interesting to see that sort of play but we saw some colossi stalkers we saw everything there and some great harass from our protoss player so Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Make sure you leave some comments and uh, subscribe and leave feedback and make sure you say happy birthday to my stepmom. And uh, we will see you guys next time. Cheers.